Ovadia, Alav Shalom did anything possible. There's so many stories about everything that he did. And I have to tell you that it's not a coincidence that right now we're in a war and we have the Lula, the tenth Lula of Ravada Yosef. Because we know that Tzadikim be mitatam keroim chayim. When Tzadik passed away, when Tzadik lived this world, is not, a, is not with us anymore. No, the body is not here. But the Tzadik, then a Shama of the Tzadik is here. I will tell you more than that. The Tzadik actually have more power after he passed away than before. Why? Because here in this world, we are limited to the body. Right? How much you can do? You're limited. But when the soul leaves the body, the soul can do much more. The Tzadik can do much more. That's why we say, Zechuto Yehem again v'tzina alenu. The Tzadik is Zechut, the merit, all the mitzvot. Everything that he did will be Zechut for us and now we can do much more. And we're asking, obviously, the Zechut of all the Tzadikim to be for us, especially in those days. And I, I want to share with you a story that my brother told me today <coughs> about what's going on in Israel so you'll understand that Miki Amcha Israel, the love that people have for each other. So my brother lives in Yerushalayim. Half of my family live in Yerushalayim, half of the family live in Bnei Brak. So I called my brother and I was in pain. You know, everything that happened. And you don't really talk loud about it, but with family you share, you know, what you feel about the situation. And you feel comfortable to, to blame this guy, that guy. You know, how come they didn't notice? How come they, the government, the previous government, the future government? We're talking and I ask him, come on, what's going on in Israel right now? What's going on? You know, he has lots of friends, he's very social, thousands of friends, any kinds of friends. I ask him, what's going on? How, wh what do you feel in Israel? And he says, listen, I'm driving every day from the north to south, from Tel Aviv to Rushalayim, back and forth. He's uh, involved in few Hamal. Uh, you know what is Hamal? What is Hamal? Cheder Milchama. It's a room, it's a war. Uh, it's a safe room? It's a war room. No, it's war not, it's not a safe room. room. Come in, come in. It's a room that people are uh, volunteering and, 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 and helping as much as they can. And they're opening Hamal everywhere. <coughs> and obviously they have different organizations, different, uh, uh, you know, groups. So he's going, I ask him, Nati, what's going on in Israel right now? What do you feel? He told me, listen, Kvodarav, he called me Kvodarav. Because one time he was here Friday. And everybody, you know, for the rap, for the rap. So even though it's my brother, since then he's like, that's the nickname, you know. <laughs> so he told me, I have to tell you and share. He told me, please share this message, this message with your people. So I'm telling you with the story that he told me, one of the story. He says, first, what you feel in the street in Israel right now is love, pure love. So then what are you talking about? We're in the 60s, 70s, uh, hipsters in America. What are you talking about? He says, yes. You walk right now in the street, in Yerushalayim, in Tel Aviv, in Bnei Brak, in the south, in the north. You feel love. People love each other. You know, I'm in the red light. Someone smiling to me. I'm going lighting a candle. You know, they're putting right now everywhere in Israel, people lighting candles. I'm lighting a candle. There is this person come to me. Give me a hug. I don't even know you. Don't touch me. Give me a hug. Then there is a lady who says, hey, you need something? told me right now in Israel I feel love and I told them because you know uh, come on we're Israeli we're subways in Kotsi Mata love love ma did you took something I said no no you don't understand so listen he told me few stories one of the stories so basically he opened Hamal in Yerushalayim lots of friends they have an apartment of someone they put computers some phone calls they're calling people they have donations come People, Venmo, Zell, whatever, they have donations from America. I even put Zell in the WhatsApp group. People send Baruch Hashem donations. And they have friends in the army. And they're telling them, okay, listen, we need uh, food right now in Basis over there. All right, in 30 minutes. Uh, we need this, we need that. Some says we need shoes, whatever. So they have donations come, basically providers. They have soldiers, mamash, mehachazit, front line, not uh, stories, uh, ganavim, mamash. People they know, friends, family, calling them, we need this, we need that. They go themselves. My brother, one of the guys, they goes, okay, they need food. He goes, mamash, to the bakery, buy pito, bureka, sim, ze, ze, ze. 
drive to the buses, give the chayalim, they eat, they enjoy, it goes back, back and forth, back and forth. So he told me, people call me different donations. There's a lady, there is a lady who called from Erzelia. And this lady, she's not a regular lefty. She's a small progressive. It means that she's <coughs> mamash against IDF, support Hamas, talking about Erevo. mamash, crazy Erevo. people say they are the worst. Listen, she called my brother, I'm telling you a story from today. She called my brother, says, listen, um, I, have a, I have a donation from Kfar Shmariyahu. You know, very fancy uh, place in Israel. Um, and someone gave me your number. I want to I wanna help. He says, what's the donation? He says, let me open the boxes. They're opening the boxes. Lots of diapers, wife, motetim, bar- baby bottles, boxes of boxes. So my brother telling her, listen, I'm, I'm dealing with soldiers. <laughs> they don't need diapers. So she's like, listen, I got uh, like two pallets of it from Bashmaya, everything fresh, good haggis, pampers, good stuff. What to do with it? So my brother says, you know what, one second. He called my sister. My sister opened Hamal in Bnei Brak. Lots of families, there is half a million Israeli refugees right now. I don't know if you are aware. Half a million moved from the south and some of them from the north to different cities in Israel. Talking about maybe 50,000 Israeli right now move from the south to be around uh, Bnei Brak, Ramazgan, Givat Shmuel. So there is a big Hamal, a big room in Rabbi Akiva Street, <coughs> taking care of the families. My sister, she's in charge over there, to bring boxes of supplies to families that literally have no place to be. So they're staying by other families, but they need stuff, right? So my brother called my sister and says, hey, listen, I have two pallets of uh, diapers, wives, this, that, that, you need it. Let's give me a second. They look at a, a list of families with babies. Right now, they need it in Bnei Brak. So says, yeah, listen, I have at least like a 50 families over here with babies. They need it. They got nothing. Their house is born. They, got, uh, they need it. Okay. <clears throat> my brother called back to this lady. says, listen, it's in Bnei Brak, but my sister don't drive. I don't know. He says, don't worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to Bnei Brak. So my brother is like, you know, Bnei Brak is the, the black and white people, you know. <laughs> says, no, 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 don't, don't worry. Listen, she was never in Bnei Brak. This lady, 50 years old, never in Bnei Brak in her life. Hate Haredim, hate the government, the IDF. Says, now, now, when Hamas killed people, they didn't ask them before. Hey, tell me, did you vote for Bibi or you vote for guns? <coughs> Did you vote uh, for Haredim or for Chilonim? Are you lefty or are you right? They didn't ask. And listen what she's telling my brother. The last 20 years she votes, not for the left, for Hadashtal. You know what is Hadashtal? It's an Arab group. Imagine. And she says, listen, in the last 20 years, every time I vote for the Arabs, I'm not talking about regular left. I am the very serious left. Says now I woke up and I understand that it's not about left, right, religious, non religious, uh, uh, man, woman, young, old. It's about Jewish. When Hamas came to the party, you think that it says, oh, you guys are not religious because it's in Chat Torah and you're dancing uh, trance music. Uh, oh, we not, you know. They, they went to the kibbutzim and they are asking the door. It says, they're, they're, tell me something. Are you supporting a baby or you... No. They shoot everybody. They killed everybody. And this lady drove with a truck full of those stuff to Bnei Brak. Now listen. My sister wasn't available. So she called my brother again. She says, listen, what am I going to do with all this stuff? You won't believe says, listen, my parents right now, they're in Argentina, because my grandmother passed away on Sukkot. So my parents went to Argentina to do Shiva. So their apartment in Bnei Brak, it's empty. Listen to a story from today, I'm telling you, my family. So my brother told this lady, says, listen, there go, there is an apartment that is empty, I will give you the code. He gave her the code of the, of the apartment. This lady went today to the apartment of my parents in Bnei Brak, and ask few Hasidim to help her 
to unload from the truck diapers for families in Bnei Brak. This is love. And you know what? The Hamas, the Machshmam, they come and they kill and they burn and they destroy. But you know what? They're not able to do anything to the spirit of the Jewish people. The opposite. They reminded us that we are one nation. They reminded us something. And I'm telling you, I just gave you one story. Everyone, Baruch Hashem, is together. People don't care who you are. Who did you vote for? So yes, we feel bad. Some of the people blame each other. Obviously, there is, it's difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy time. I'm not saying. There's lots of open questions. There's lots of investigations. But at the same time, right now, people literally, they give things that they don't have. They go and they sing to, other, uh, to soldiers and they support families and they open their houses. Things, they're amazing. And I feel like this is what Ravavadi always wanted. And he's happy right now. In his tent, Hilula, he's looking at us and he says, it's very sad that we needed the Hamas to do it. But, we, but you know, is happy that that's the result. The Gemara in Masechet Megillah is telling us that Haman Arasha, Haman Arasha was the worst. Ratsa to destroy the whole Jewish people. Le'ashmid, le'arogu, le'abed et kol ha'yehudim minar ve'ad zaken tab ve'nashim be'yom echad. The Gemara is telling us that you need to say on Purim, Baruch Haman, you need to bless Haman. Can you bless Haman? It's impossible. The Gemara is Amarava. You have to drink enough wine. Right? Ad. You want, you know, you're not going to realize. Ben. Arur Haman le Baruch Mordechai. You'll mix. You'll say Baruch Haman. How you can bless Haman? The Gemara give you the answer right away. You don't think it's an answer because it's like different paragraph. But it's an answer. The Gemara is telling you that you know how many prophets we had to the Jewish people? How many prophets we had? Real ones? Huh? Nevi'im? No, Nevi'im. No, no, that's 48 books. Kama Nevi'im le Sha'atam. People, they were prophets from Akados Baruch You know, they had schools for Nevoah. Two times of Yotzei Mitzrayim. Ki flying ki Yotzei Mitzrayim. 1.2 million Nevi'im we had to the Jewish people. 1.2 million. Gemara Masechet Megillah. 1.2 million. Says the Gemara, all of those 1.2 million and the 48 Nevi'im and Nevi'ot all together, they weren't able to do what one little Haman Amalek Yamach Shmo was able to do. How many times those Nevi'im were talking to the Jewish people? You have to do Teshuvah, you have to pray, you have to learn, you have to give Tzedakah, you have to be nice to your friend, to your wife, to your kids. You have to do the right thing. How many times? 1.2 million. Did we ever listen? No. We didn't. One Haman, little Haman, I am Namu, Haman ben Amdata. It was Amal Amal. And one little Haman was able to make the entire Jewish people to do Teshuvah. Everyone together. To go, to fast with Esther, and to learn the Alachot of Kemitsa with Mordechai. And everybody did Teshuvah. Says the Gemara, when you understand that, you know what you says, Baruch Haman. Why Baruch Haman? Because Haman is nobody. Haman is the messenger of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Akadosh Baruch Hu, he sent Haman. Why? So we're going to wake up. So we'll do Teshuvah. So we're going to realize that, you know, we need to do the right thing. That's, that's what Akadosh Baruch Hu wants from us. So when he sent Haman, it's actually bracha for us. Let me tell you something. When Akadosh Baruch Hu sent Hamas, that's definitely the worst thing that happened to the Jewish people since the Holocaust. You know, I, I spoke today to people, they were seven years old. They've seen everything. And they told me, we, we never heard, we never saw something like that, not even close. Crazy. Mamash. But you know what? Who sent the Hamas? We try to blame uh, IDF, uh, the intelligence forces, Modi'in, Shabak, Mossad, Bibi, government, Yemanim, Smolanim, uh, you know. Uh, who sent the Hamas? Tachles. Kadosh Baruch Hu. 
קדוש ברוך הוא, סן דה חמאס, המלאך של הישמעאלים, came and told them go do it. Why? So we don't know why, we don't know חשבונות שמיים. But you see the results. A week before it's happened, on Yom HaKippurim, the Jewish people came to a place that since Mamash, since the, I think the second Bet HaMikdash, the second temple, we didn't have fights in the Jewish people like last Yom HaKippurim. If you read this history, last time that we had something similar, when Jewish people didn't let each other to pray, was uh, Bait Shani. Bait Shani, over 2,000 years. In Eretz Israel, the Jewish state, people fighting Makot. No, they are, hey, listen, I think you, you know, over, no, 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 it's not, not in school when you draw a line in the table and you push each other, you know. No, Makot, going fighting each other in aggressive way in Tel Aviv. Why? Because some of them want to pray and some of them says, no, you're not going to pray. Then the government, the court doesn't allow Jewish people to celebrate a kafot shniot. Kadosh Baruch Hu says, you know, you don't let people celebrate. No, don't worry, nobody going to do a kafot shniot. No one is going to dance. <coughs> it's not a coincidence that when you find yourself in a situation of sinat chinam, a Kadosh Baruch Hu will do something to remind us that we are brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, those young people who dance in the party, they were religious? Nope. No. They, they keep Shabbat and Simchat Torah? No. no. Some of them. How you can dance in a party keeping yeah. Simchat Torah? I know some of them. Ma, some of them. They keep uh, with Amira Legoy? Some of them I know from Nebuchadnezzar. They came before? Person, but I know, but so they music, they're not really religious. Wonder what it's not a Tov, I'm very happy there is solutions to be in a party without wanting uh, <laughs> 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 The point is, the point is, the point is, the point is, the point is that the place, you know, you need to understand, the place over there was not a place of uh, Kedusha, a place of learning Torah. Yes. There was a Buddha over there, Avodah Zara. Drugs, whatever. Yeah. But did you hear one rabbi say something bad about him? Nope. No, why? <coughs> because unfortunately, we need the Hamas to remind us we are brothers and sisters. Did you hear one rabbi say, oh, it's okay, they took this lady because she was lefty? She was actually, she didn't, you know, she did whatever. Wanna, there was a few lefty. Did you hear one rabbi say, oh, uh, the guy, the parents, why? Why? Because the Hamas, Yamach Shman, they were. Um, um, Obviously, they deserve to get all the punishment in the world, but still, they're reminding us that we all, one family, one person, one entity, one nation, one heart, brothers and sisters. Because at the end of the day, we all coming from the same father. And you can't ignore this fact. And you know what someone told me? Why are Kadosh Baruch Hu reminding us, you know, in this way? Why? Why, why to kill 13 hundred people, some says even more, 14 or whatever the, the, the number is. Why, why, why you need to do it? Why are you not talking to us in a nice way? You want us to do mitzvot, to do Torah, <coughs> be nice. You know, <coughs> because he told me right now, many people in the world, the last thing they want to be is Jewish. Many Jewish, unfortunately, they want to hide their identity. They go, he says, we have nothing to do with Jewish people. They don't want to expose they don't want to, you know, go public, oh, I'm Jewish. I'm telling you. I had a, I had a flight, I had a, um, a wedding that I went to do the wedding in Paris. I came back. There was uh, one guy here from Miami that told me in the airport, not here, in, in Europe, had connection in Portugal. So they told me we were two weeks already in Europe. And you're the first person with kippah. Not just kippah, the Sephardic center kippah from the back, so, you know. Lamut al Kiddush Hashem. Exactly. So they're telling me, you're the first person. They went to Italy, to France, to Portugal, they went to Belgium. Because you're the first person we see publicly with kippah. So I told them, if that's the case, so Hamas didn't kill 1,300 people. Unfortunately, they killed 8 million. If we are afraid, if we are embarrassed of our identity, 
if you weren't willing to expose to the world that we, you know, in Paris, you know what you see over there? Everyone walk, they do whatever they want. You can identify yourself as a dog and people who says, yes, you're a dog, right? And then you say, sorry, I'm, I don't feel like a dog. I feel like a female dog. And it says, okay, that's good. You can do whatever you want. There is naked statues all over Paris. People do with Jalabie or, or, or whatever they want. But God forbid you're going to go with Kippah. Oh, <laughs> you, you know, you, you know, put people in an uncomfortable situation. Everybody's going to do whatever they want. But Kippah, has Khalilah, that's the problem. We're not going to let them do it. Because if that's the case, so I'm sorry, they, yeah, they won the war. If Jewish people in Europe, in America, says I'm not going with Kippah, I'm not going with Tzitzit, I'm not talking about in a very risky situation when you see people in Turkey jumping around you. I'm talking about normal cases. Be proud of yourself. They're proud of themselves, but I will tell you more than that. So I'm talking with someone, and he's telling me, Rabbi, but why... Why Hashem cannot be nice with us and we're going to do the right thing? I say, you know what? You're right. I was also thinking like that. But let's, let, let's look at the history. When Hashem was nice with the Jewish people, you know, in Germany, people don't talk about it. But most of the people who died, who got killed in the Holocaust, they weren't religious. Look at the videos. Look at the pictures. Some were yeshivot. Most of the people, they weren't religious. Hitler reminded people three generations that they were Jewish. They forgot. They intermarried. They got assimilated. They felt that they were Germany. He reminded them. Look in America. America is the best country ever since creation. Since Adam Arishon, that was the best country for Jewish people. The best. Financially, emotionally, mentally, uh, uh, socially, you name it. Living in America as a Jew was never, it's better than Israel. Here, man, you feel secure. You make money, everything is good. Education, uh, everything is amazing. How many religious people in America, and unfortunately right now it says over 50% intermarriage. 80% of the Jewish people in America, they don't feel comfortable exposing their identity publicly. In their house, they maybe will do something. You go to places like Cleveland, that's crazy. People talk about 90% assimilation, intermarriage, 90%. So I don't understand. If you're telling me that when everything is good and everything is amazing and no one is anti-Jews and you can work, you can make money, you can live, so people will do mitzvot, people will learn Torah. So why in America not 6 million Jews are, are, are religious? Why it's the opposite? Why it's the opposite? Why most of the Jewish people in Arab country today or in Europe that feel, you know, the dangerous, like the French, most of them are traditional. But in America, you know, when everything is amazing, most of the Jews, unfortunately, reform, conservative, you know, this and that. How many Jewish schools you have in America and how many Jewish people? You put the numbers. Not even 5% sent to Jewish schools. Not even 5% of the Jews in America. That's embarrassing. How many, ha look, look, look how many schools we have in Miami. How many Jews live in Miami? Put the numbers. Most of the Jews in public school. But why? You live in Miami. You know what? The government support you. Give you literally eight, 9,000 for each kid. You have organization that help you. You can do it. You have kosher restaurant. You can keep Shabbat. You have Eruv. You can walk. You can do whatever you want. So unfortunately, the answer is that when everything is nice, everything is comfortable, you just don't care anymore. You just feel like, whatever. So unfortunately, you know, you need to slap sometimes. And, and if you have kids, you know, just like education. Sometimes you can tell your son a thousand times, don't do something, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. He won't listen. He won't listen. Then you scream at him. And if you were living in my generation, you get a slap, like a good one. And that's it. That's it. That's the end of it. Right? But why? But you try the nice way. You talk to your kids a thousand times. Sometimes, unfortunately, the kids don't listen. They need a good stuff. They need a Kenish for a few Moroccans. They know exactly what I'm talking about. You take the belt, but not the soft one. 
take the Faragama one, the real skin with the big boom, you know. And, and, yeah, yeah, you know. I see a guy coming over here, a little kid, you know, coming over here with H over her mess over here. It's like, what happened in your head? It's like, you know, the belt of my father, you know. One day come with Faragamo, one day with mess. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. To remind you, Kadosh Baruch Hu gave us with the belt this time. You think he wanted it? I have kids. I'm telling you, when you punish your kids, you know who suffer more? You suffer. The worst feeling. You take your kids, Nahom Mordechai, you take your kids to Orlando. Right? You, you spend money, you spend time, you go crazy, and it's difficult, big budget. You drive three hours, you're coming to Orlando. You already put in that trip $3,000 by the hotel and the food and losing job and this and that. You spent a few good thousands, right? And you're driving, come on, Hamo, three towers, right? And you're coming to uh, whatever, Disney nonsense, to the, the, the main place. And then your kids fighting. Because he got Bamba and uh, Yankale took from uh, Aaron at a Bamba. Little Bamba, cost 50 cents. 50 cent Bamba. And you have in the car 20 of them. And they start to fight against each other from Bamba. And you tell them, stop, we're in Orlando. We're going to the parks, to Universal. No, he started first. I hate you. You're the worst brother ever. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Till you have to separate them. You take the Bamba. None of you getting the Bamba. Put in punishment. You know what? We're going home. No Orlando for you guys. Who's suffering more? The parents. Not the kids. The kids will forget. You're spending so much. You're doing so much. You're putting effort and energy and money and time and thought. But then... Then you have to stop it because your kids don't get it. You know what? Well, at Kadosh Baruch Hu, he spent so much for us. He created the whole world. Everything. And we're fighting in Tel Aviv. Call Nidre. No, don't pray. I want to pray. Don't pray. Wanna Fighting like, like little kids. Pray not to pray. Why you care? Let you pray. You let him be in his house. Everybody is happy. Love each other. You're brothers. So Kadosh Baruch Hu is giving us punishment. You think that Hashem is happy? Hashem is suffering more than all of us. As I told you last week, when you pray, pray for Hashem. Because we have short memory. We forget. Tell me, you wake up every morning, you remember the Holocaust? You don't. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu, every day. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, every day. Every day, he remember all the Jews who got killed in the last 3,000 years. Every day, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is seeing Mamash, Bet HaMikdash on fire. The first and the second one. You know how painful it is? The best gift we got from Hashem is the ability to forget. Imagine you remember any bad things that happened to you since you were born. Imagine. You won't be able to function. You won't be able to live. But Akados Baruch Hu, you know, he, he remember everything. We need to pray for Hashem not to be in Galut. We need to pray for Hashem to stop the, the you know. We says, Asele lo forget about us. We have short memory. People today already forget. You know? Okay, that's life. People telling me, Mamaja. Okay, this is life. People already get used to the concept that we have 200 hostages in Gaza. Okay, that's life. I feel bad for them. Hopefully, uh, you know. Kadosh Baruch Hu, don't, don't forget. So when you pray, don't just pray for yourself. Pray for Hashem. And unfortunately, we needed this reminder. How do you pray for Hashem? You say, Hashem, I don't want you to be in Galut. I want the Shekhinah to go back to Yerushalayim. Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling you that he's not going back to Yerushalayim Shel Mala at Shiavol Yerushalayim Shel Mata. Nahon? David, you gonna help me? Loi loi avoi Lirushalayim Shel Mala at Shiavol Lirushalayim Shel Mata. Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling you I won't go to Yerushalayim. My Yerushalayim! Till you go to Yerushalayim. At Kadosh Baruch is in Galut. Pray for Hashem. And how I know that this is the truth? Because I see the results. You judge things by the results. As I told you, and we're going to be positive right now. In Israel, what you see right now in the street is unity, love, and faith. Those three things right now. And you know what? When my brother told me that, and he told me crazy stories about people, you know, there was a lawyer that had a break in the court 
and he's calling my brother to the Hamal and he says, listen, I have two hours, what can I do? So my brother says, uh, let me find out. He says, okay, there is a group of 20 soldiers, Mizrahi Yerushalayim, they stuck over there the whole day. Please, can you bring him some food? So this lawyer is leaving the court, he's going to Shuk Machne Yehuda, taking whatever he can take, he's going to Mizrahi Yerushalayim, you know, bringing those soldiers food, going back to court to work. Doesn't know them. Nothing. And thousands of stories like that. That's right now is the answer. This is the answer. Mamash. Unity, love and faith in Hashem. This is what Akados Baruch Hu wanted. That's why he brought it all of it. And you know what? And this is, it's, I'm afraid to say it, but this is the truth. If we're not going to wake up, if we're not going to wake up, basically we're saying to Akados Baruch Hu, you killed all of those people for no reason. If we're not going to change, if we're not going to do something about it, basically we're telling to Hashem, all of those people that got killed by, Yama, by the Hamas Yamach Shmam was for no reason, because we didn't learn anything from that. We didn't change, we didn't get the message. You know? And believe me, we don't want to be in that space. We want to say, Hashem, we got it. Please, no more. We got it. We believe in you. We have faith. We're united. We love each other. Avat chinam. Avat chinam. That's what we need. And there is one thing, Mamash, last thing. Before we're going to read one halacha from Rabbi Vadek, going to be Leilun Ishmatos, Fatamed Ovevot Bakever. There is one thing that after, you know, hearing all the stories with my brother, he asked me one thing. He says, listen, you're a rabbi. Maybe you have the answer. I don't have an answer. Maybe you can ask the people. How in two weeks, three weeks, one month, when Be'ezot Hashem will be over, hopefully all the hostages will be in Israel, going to destroy Hamas, Be'ezot Hashem, one month, okay, two months, whatever. Everything is over. How we can keep the energy that we have today? How we going to keep it that this lady that against Haredim will drive to Bnei Brak for Shabbat to spend time with religious family? In two years from today, how we can keep the love between each other? How we can keep the unity? That's the question that I'm asking you. That's something that we need to take a balap on ourselves. Because in two, three weeks, three weeks, people go back to their routine, panasa, family, that's it, game over. People get used to it. Now what? We're gonna go back to the same nonsense, to the same fight, so Chaz Vechalila it's going to happen again? We don't want it to happen again. Right? We say never again. After the Holocaust, we all say never again. Right? Yeah. And millions of Jews went to Auschwitz. Right? And say never again, never again. And what happened? Same thing. Slaughtering kids, raping women, burning houses with the people alive. Ma nishtana laila azemi lot. Nothing. You know Why? Because we didn't change. If you don't change, the result will be the same thing. I'm, I know it's a tough thing, but if we're not going to wake up now, when are you going to wake up? You, you need 20,000 people, God forbid. Ma, ma, ma you need 200,000, 6 million, like the Holocaust. Ma, how much we need? Can we get the message right now, or we need a few more months? Ma, so I, I believe we should say, Hashem, we got it. We got it. Thank you. Chazaku Baruch. We got the message. That's it but how we can keep it. So I think each one of us can keep it. Each one of us, with small things. Smile to each other, text messages, hey, how are you, how's your day? You know, small things, stupid things. When you meet people, doesn't matter what's the background, religious, non-religious, man, woman, Ashkenazi, Sfaradi, right, left, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, we are brothers and sisters. And that's what we need to have, the Avat Chinam. And our Avadi, Allah Shalom, was talking about it. And was bringing everyone together and says, that's what we need. Doesn't matter. He was actually the one who says, doesn't matter where you come from. This country, that country. Right now we live in Israel. We have the Mala, the Atta, everyone is together. That's what we're trying to do. So I'm going to read, but one and we'll see how it's connected to the situation. Ravadia is telling us about the Alahot is in Hazon of Adia, Kitsur Shulhan Aruch of Hazon of Adia. And he's telling us, chapter 15, 
אין קידוש אלא במקום סעודה. When you do קידוש, you have to do the same place when you're going to have the meal, that's when the place you do the סעודה. ולא יקדש בבית זה ויסד בבית אחר. Don't do קידוש in your house, then go to your neighbor to eat. Sometimes it's happened when you go to your neighbor, you go to the house next to you, you do קידוש here, you go there, or you do קידוש in the shul, you're not eating anything, you go home. There's two problems. No, nothing to do with the Dakat Nerot, because this is also applied during the day of Shabbat. Many times people, and that's very important, even if you do Kiddush in Shul, but you don't eat enough, it's not Sauda, so not only that you need to do Kiddush in your house, you basically ate before Kiddush, because if this Kiddush doesn't qualify as a Kiddush, you ate before Kiddush. Why? Why we need Kiddush Bimkom Sauda? Huh? You know why? Aaron, why you need to do Kiddush? במקום סעודה. You do kiddush in one house and you eat in a different house. מה אתה אומר? Good question. You bless. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. But you're you, you very, you very close because you say you bless. You started good. The Navi is telling us וקראת לשבת עונג לקדוש אדוני מכובד וחיבתו מעשותיך מצור חפתיך ודבר דבר אז תתענג על אדוני אלוהיך והרכבתיך ומתי הארץ והחלתיך על אחת יעקב כי פי אדוני דיבר. The Pasuk is telling us וקראת לשבת עונג What is וקראת? You call the Shabbat קידוש Right? שבת מקודש Right? You do קידוש What is עונג? מה זה עונג? עזרא, מה זה עונג? ארוחה. אה? להתענג בתענוגים, ברבורים וסלב ודגים. You know what is עונג? עונג is to sit, to eat מחשי, קיבל, פנדס, לחמאג'ים and other food that other people eat. עונג שבת! מרוקן פיש! עונג, 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 עונג. You, 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 you confuse the oneg with nega. The nega tarat. Oneg. So basically the pasuk is telling us vekarata la shabbat oneg. You have vekarata and you have oneg. Karata is kiddush. What is oneg? Enjoy sauda. Do it in the same place. Vekarata oneg. You have to do it in the same place. You know what I'm learning from this right now? Is I'm just thinking in my head and there's going to be little nishmat. רבי עובדיה יוסף בן ג'ורג'יה אין לעילוי נשמת שושן בן מימון that this is the סעודה for his עילוי נשמה. When you do קידוש, when Jewish people do קידוש, when they elevate themselves, when they become holy, when they reveal sparks of godliness among themselves, when they connect to each other, when they love each other, when they're united, when they love Hashem, when they have faith in Hashem, when they say Shabbat נקודש. יום השישי ויכולו השמיים בארץ. You know what they're gonna get? עונג. וקראת? עונג. When Jewish people do וקראת, הקדוש ברוך הוא will give you עונג. When you do קידוש, when you respect Shabbat, when you respect each other, והתקדשתם והייתם קדושים, כי קדוש אני, הקדוש ברוך הוא is telling you I'm קדוש. You also need to be קדוש, because you're my people. אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש. But how Hashem will be Kadosh? There is one condition. What's the condition? Ukedoshim bechol yom yaelu chasela. If there is no Kedoshim, chas vechalila, there is no ata Kadosh or Shimcha Kadosh. You want Oneg? You want the family to enjoy together? You want good education for the kids? You want Zivugim? You want Beriut, Parnasa, Tzlacha, Simcha? You want it? You want Oneg? Vekarata. When you remind yourself that we're here for a reason and we're here to be light to the nation and we're going to do it, you'll get the oneg. So this guy that I'm talking this week and I'm telling him about America and you know, and when Hashem is nice with us, we're getting these results. So he told me, I don't understand. So it's all our fault. Everything is the Jewish people. So if right now people in Somalia are killing each other, in Sudan and Somalia, they, they're killing each other. It's my problem? Gal, what do you Right now, right now, someone in China, okay, in China, in the middle of Guangzhou, 
killed someone else. Another um, yin and, and, and yang, they're killing yeah, each no. other. Huh? Sheyeb, Bezot Hashem. No, Lama, Lama, man, they did something to you. It's our fault, it's our problem, it's our business. I'm asking you. Yes. If right now there is a woman in India being raped by Hamorim, it's our problem? But but it's it's my problem no, no, no. right now. Yeah, you must. Is that Mati? It's my fault. No. So let me tell you something. And uh, Yohonadav is saying something so smart over here. If you come into a dark room with a candle with light, you bring light to the room, right? If the corner is still dark, you know what it means. The the light that you brought is not good enough. It's not bright enough. You need to bring more light. If it's dark in the corner. It's not a problem of the corner. It's a problem of the light. If in the corner of the room it's still dark, who is responsible? The one that brings the light. Bring more light. We are the one who bring you the torch of light. All are going. If it's dark in the corner, if now right now they're selling babies in Indonesia, if right now they're selling drugs in, in Mexico, it's our problem. Because those corners of the world are very dark, or so dark, that even the devil doesn't go there. Because it's so dark. And it's our problem. And it's our fault. And we're responsible. Because if it's dark in the corner, you need to bring more light. Because when there is lots of light, it's not going to be dark in the corner. I remember when Mashgiach, we used to sit in yeshiva in Ponovich, 3,000 boys. Rav Dessler was walking, and we used to schmooze, you know, because uh, what do you do in yeshiva? You know, you have one mitzvah, one avera. Mitzvah to learn Torah, that's the mitzvah. We have one mitzvah, right? And then you have one avera, not to learn Torah, bitul Torah, that's it. But how you do bitul Torah? You're talking schmoozing nice. You know what is nice? Nice is in Yiddish, news. Was the nice. Was the nice. Make the nice, you know. Better, better. He was from, from Pronite. All the nice, all the news you get in the mikve. You know, they said that Trump, one time he, he wanted to know the news. He wanted to know the nice. Was the nice. Was the gishain. Was the elza. Was the dogs. He wanted to know. He wanted to know. So he's asking someone, he says, as a dog veteran, a gesunter Yildenburg Hashem, how you know the nice? So the guy told him, go to the mikveh, you'll hear everything. He says, okay. Trump dressing like a Hasidish guy. You know, he got his stomach anyway. He's putting his, uh, his kapota, his kartel. You know, he learned some words, you know. Uh, and, 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 you know, he's going to the mikveh. He's coming to the mikveh. There is a Biale guy over there with a yellow mustache from smoking 70 years. You know, sitting in the mikveh, you know, scratching his stomach. And as soon as he's coming, he says, Oh, did you hear the nice? He says, What? I heard Trump is coming to the mikveh. <laughs> they know everything. They know everything over there. So I'm smoothing with my friend talking about the nice. You know what? The Moshgiach is walking and he say, because of you guys, Mamash Kacha, Biglalchem, right now, there is someone Jewish that's going to marry non-Jewish. Now I'm 17 years old in Bnei Brak, never heard about the concept marrying non-Jewish. Only in the Torah, it's other psukim that you're not allowed to do it. Lord it Hatan Bam. But I actually didn't imagine that people do it. Because I'm in 17 in Bnei Brak. Right? The only thing I know, there is Haredim and Datim. Didn't even met Chilonim yet. <laughs> Haredim, Datim. And the Mashgiach is telling me, because of me, some got right now married the Shikze. I told them, Rabbi, Yelandenu, Rabbeinu, Ani? I'm barely, you know, my biggest sin is Lashon Arad that I like to do a few times a day. Ma, talking about, he says, when you're not learning Torah, Someone that is connected to you is not protected. So his Yetzirah is going crazy and he's going to marry the Shikta. And I was like, what? And the answer is yes. We all one soul. One soul. When you put your finger in the fire, it's not only your finger that is suffering. The whole body is suffering. 
When you have a headache, you don't go to job and you say, okay, I have a headache. You take your head, you put it on the side, and you keep working. When you have a headache, you have a headache. That's it, right? When you walk and you have your little dog in the corner of the table, you know what I'm talking about? Allah alayhi Right, then you remember that you have it. You don't even remember you have feet, right? And you, oh, you feel it right now, and for, for two minutes you're biting your tongue. It's like, all of the sudden, but why? It's only a little thing in your body. It's not, it's not your heart, it's not your liver, it's not your head, it's not your eyes. No. When something of your body, when a little part of it is in pain, the whole body is in pain. When one guy speaks Lashon Ara, people dying in Gaza. That's it. Telling you the truth as is. When someone doesn't learn Torah, there is a, a nice guy who's marrying a shikta now in Cleveland. Why? Because he wake up in the morning and doesn't feel like Jewish anymore. Why? Because there is less Kedushah in the world. We are together. Vekarata Oneg. When you do Vekarata, Kadosh Baruch will take care of the Oneg part. But we need to do Vekarata. We need to do those things. And the way to do it is definitely increasing, obviously, mitzvot, chasadim tovim, Torah, tefillah. But always to remember, we all, one nation, one people, one love. And we need to love each other, mamash, ke'ish echad, belev echad. So my Kadosh Baruch will help us. B'zchut ha-tadikim, b'zchut, b'zchut Hashem ha-ilula, Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, zikhonot tadik levracha, b'zchut ba'al ha-seudah, that sponsored this amazing ilula, Yehun Ishmat, Shushan Ben Mimon, B'zchut Hashem, that we can have mamash nisim gluim, big miracles, and we'll be able to keep and this is our mission, each one of us, to keep the unity, the love, and the faith that we have right now, to keep it forever and ever. Bezat Hashem. Baruch Hu yizakeh otanu, Rabbi Hanan Mekasha Omer, Atzai Kadosh Baruch Hu, Lezakeh et Yisrael, Efikach Yibayla, Yom Torah Medvot, Shenemar, Adonai Hafet Eman Titko, Yagdil Torah Ve'yadir.